Howdy, Tinker Nerds. After a long and arduous journey, we finally reached the 3D printed gates of success. So let's knock down those gates, climb up that hill, and proclaim I will not back down from a Tootsie Roll. I will always have sparkles. I have fed the Wookiee, and I will finish this project, and you will never magnetize my pajamas. Motivational speeches just aren't my thing. All right, let's finish up this CD-ROM drive 3D printing project by adding the final key component, a 3D printing pen. So in the last video, we did a successful test of our CNC machine using a pen. Now to convert it to a 3D printer, we need a hot end and an extruding device. Luckily, you can get a 3D printing pen that ticks all those boxes for less than $15. It's crazy. I chose this particular pen because it's super cheap and easy to hack, but you could probably make other 3D pens work using this method. Basically, these things work by loading filament into the top, setting the extrusion speed with this slider, setting the hot end and temperature here, and using these buttons to move the filament forward and back. Now, in order for this to work with our project, we're gonna have to automate the pen so that it can be controlled with our CNC shield. So let's figure it out, friends. But Buttons work by having two sides that are disconnected whenever the button is in its off state and then connected when the button is pressed. The easiest way to automate a button press is to have a switch that is controlled by a current so that when there is no current, the switch is off. And then when current is applied, the switch is on. That current controlled switch that I'm talking about is also known as a transistor. So to connect the button, let's start by taking the back off the 3D pin and then you should see the main board. And after you unscrew it and disconnect it from the hot end to extract it, you should see the small buttons for extruding and retracting the filament. What we can do is solder some wire to either side of the extruder button and then run it to a breadboard for testing. I connected the button to the transistor like this, but instead of running it directly to the Arduino, we're going to need to run it to our CNC shield instead. So the best option for controlling the button on the CNC shield is using these spindle pins. These are intended for turning on and off an engraver spindle. If we connected a multimeter to these pins while the board's powered on, it shouldn't have any voltage. Then, in our software, when we check the spindle on box, you should see the voltage change on the multimeter. So for testing, we can connect that to our breadboard and see if it controls our pin. One of the biggest issues with the voltage that's coming from the CNC shield is that it's too high to switch the transistor. So what we need to do is add a resistor to the ground wire to resolve that issue. And you may have to try different resistances until you find the one that triggers the transistor. Hopefully you had some luck with that and you were able to trigger the extruder button via the software. Then all you have to do is cut a little hole for the wires and reassemble the pin. Now mounting it to the Z axis kind of depends on how you decided to set up your CNC shield. And it can be done in a multitude of ways. Since I decided to 3D print my Z axis, I also 3D printed a mount for my pin. And you can find all that on Thingiverse. But you can basically use any method that'll work for you. Last time I even went so far as to use clothes pins and lots of hot glue. We got it all set up, but before we can test it out, we need to tweak our G code. I'm gonna be using the same G code that I generated in my last video using the ESOL program. The spindle controls are M05 to stop it and M03 to start it. But with this particular model of 3D pin, you first have to send it a signal to wake it up and then wait until the green light comes on before you can start extruding. So in the code, let's send it a signal using M03 and then use the G04 command to pause the program for 20 seconds, allowing the pin to heat up. Then send the stop command to stop it from extruding. After we move the z-axis down, we can now send the M05 command to start the extrusion. Then right before the z-axis moves back up, you can send the M03 command to stop the extrusion. All right, save it and upload it to your gerbil software. And with everything mounted and powered up, let's test it out. we have a 3D print, but it's not really a 3D print because it's just one layer. 
So going back into the G code, let's duplicate all the movements. So right before the final Z axis movement, let's add another Z axis movement telling the Z axis to move up 0.2 millimeters. Then we can copy all the commands between these two Z axis movements and paste them right here so that the extruder moves up and draws another box on top of the first one. Save that, upload it, and run it. Now we're cooking, or melting rather. So where did we go from here? Well, now you've kind of seen that making a 3D object is basically taking a 2D slice and layering it on top of each other until you get it as high as you want. So in easel, you can basically make any design you want, export the G code, and then edit it so that you can duplicate the layers and make it as tall as you need. Well, that's kind of lame. What about actual 3D objects, like the ones you can find on Thingiverse? Well, that's where things can get a little complicated. Gerbil is meant for CNC machines, not 3D printers. So if you were to download a 3D file and try to use a 3D slicing program to convert it to G code, it wouldn't really work because there's not a lot of 3D printing commands that gerbil would understand. So what we need is a program that can convert 3D files to gerbil. One free program that I found that should work is called FreeMill. You can download it for free, but you have to enter in your email address and phone number. It's meant for CNC engravers, but it should generate the proper G code for you. And then you'll have to tweak the G code to account for the Z axis movements and sending the start and stop extruder commands. So feel free to mess around with that and hopefully you'll get the results you want. Congratulations guys, you made your own teeny tiny 3D printer. If you're able to make this project, let me know how it goes and let me know what you've been able to 3D print. I know that this has been a long series, but I really appreciate all of you guys that have stuck with me. Now that this project's over, maybe I'll start doing some easier ones so that I can get more videos out for you guys. Got any ideas? You can submit your own or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, subscribing, or following me on social media. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.